small girl in the sand Is this place at your command? Can I stay here for a while? Can I see your sweet, sweet smile? Old enough now to change your name When so many love you, is it the same? It's the woman in you that makes you want to play this game How you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out another Neil Young classic. It is Cowgirl in the Sand. Now, we're doing an acoustic version. The electric version is very similar. If you play it on electric guitar, with a little bit of crunch. Uh, I've kind of combined the parts. So on the original version, there's two kind of distinct guitar parts that uh, have these little uh, embellishments that kind of link together. But there's quite a few videos of Neil playing it acoustically, and I think I've kind of copied some of those ones together uh, to form this kind of arrangement. It's kind of based off of the one, the Massey Hall one at, in Toronto. Um, but there's quite a few versions. I'm going to take you a few of the through a few of the variations that, that he does. I mean, it's such a great tune. I highly recommend going through and learning some of the original recording as well. Uh, a couple of things about the keys. Now, uh, all of the Neil Young acoustic versions of this tune that I found are all played on a guitar that is tuned down a tone. Okay, so he's doing the same chords I'm going to show you, but if you want to play along with those ones, you have to tune all of the strings on your guitar down one tone. If you're going to do that, you probably need thicker strings as well, otherwise they get a bit rattly, but uh, that's uh, for something for you to discover. It works fine like this. Uh, obviously, uh, being that little bit lower, it makes it a bit easier to sing it. I can't sing it uh, in the right octave in standard tuning because I don't want to go through the whole frigma roll of retuning and restringing my guitar. So on the original recorded version, it is in this key anyway. Okay, so it's a lot more extended solos and stuff, and it's just sung a little higher. But uh, you know, so it's it's up to you which way you'd want to do it. I'd recommend just uh, sticking in regular tuning. It's a hell of a lot easier. Now uh, on the surface. It's not a particularly difficult tune. It's another one of those near ones where the, it's the minutiae that becomes the hard part. The actual kind of standard chords and all of that sort of stuff is not particularly difficult, but there's lots of little cool things to check out. So let's start by chatting through the chords. They're all fairly standard kind of chords, I suppose. There's a couple of uh, usual Neil Young quirks that you might want to uh, check out. So first chord is A minor. I'm going to go through all of um, them little hammer on his stuff uh, a little later on as well uh, but standard the first chord a minor and then to an f now uh, it sounds to me like most of the time he's playing an f major seven and he tends to play f this way uh, either f or f major seven so uh, if you start with a c chord move your second finger down one string and then put your little finger underneath your third finger so you have nothing on the thicker string than third fret third fret second fret first fret and the thinner string is either muted by the underneath of the first finger or you can kind of manipulate it around to make it ring out. If it's ringing out, it's an F major 7. Both F and F major 7 work in this song, but it sounds to me like most of the time he's got that thinner string muted, okay? But again, it's different on different versions. It's really up to you which, which uh, version you like the sound of. You can always grab the bass note there with the thumb as well. I don't think he is quite often, but I, I personally like to try and put that bass note on there. Um, so the intro, A minor, going to F, two, three. Now, again, on the uh, recorder version, it's a pretty long solo and stuff going on there. But... So let's just do that twice, then the verse, A minor. Hello, cowgirl in the F, two, three, four. A minor, is this place that you're an F, two, three, four, C. Can I G to F, probably major 7 to G, C? Can I G your F to G? D minor 7, E minor. So D minor 7, thinnest four strings only. Open, second, first, first. So you're barring the first finger on the thinnest two strings, second finger, second fret on the third string. Make sure that's nice and kind of round, otherwise it'll mute the strings either side. So 
nothing on the thickest two strings, zero, two, one, one, okay? That's the D minor seven. Old enough, now that's an E minor, to C to F. Now here, another quir Neil quirk is that uh, he often plays a C chord as a C slash G, so a C chord with a G bass. So if you start with a regular C chord, move your third finger over onto the thicker string, and then put your little finger down where your third finger was. So you end up with three, three, two, zero, one, zero. Okay, officially it's called a C with a G bass, but really I just think of it as a C chord. Just Neil's got his little quirk on it. So for that bit we have the D minor seven to E minor to the C to F. Okay, the advantage also with this C uh, with a G bass to the F is that everything just moves down. Okay, I think in this point as well it's F, not F major seven. It sounds to me anyway. So D minor to E minor to C to D minor to E minor. Now D minor seven, notice there from the F, you're just lifting off the third and fourth fingers. You're left there with the D minor seven. And to E minor, to C to F. It's the D minor seven that takes you on a C to F. Okay, and then there's this little uh, riff. So, so keeping the strumming real simple, four down strums to the bar. Here we go, starting on the A minor. Three, four, A minor. Hello, cowgirl in the air. Two, three, four, A minor. This is place at your caress. Ten, C, can I G here? F major seven to G. C, can I G to F major seven then to G? D minor seven to E minor to C to F with D minor seven to E minor and C to F. It's a D minor in you that makes you wanna see the end. Okay, so relatively simple, all of those parts. That's most of the song. Now we're into the kind of realm of rhythms and the, the difficulties that possesses. It's a classic thing for Neil Young. It's an easy song to play badly, but if you're going to try and push past that and be able to play it a bit like Neil, which is what I'm going to try and uh, try and achieve in, in this lesson, there's a few things that are more complicated. It's a, this is actually like my sixth or seventh go at trying to explain it, and I keep going, oh, that's not good enough. It's too, you know, because it's, it's a complicated thing for me to explain. It's a fairly comfortable thing for me to do now because I've been studying Neil's plan for a long time, and I'm a massive fan. I really want to figure it out. So I'm going to try and explain the, the figuring out as I go along as well. Um, the big thing for Neil is the consistency of the movement of the strumming hand, right? So it's uh, in this song, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and it's going to move even. Even. Still, the hand is really consistent through all of that stuff, even the lead lines, right? It's a real key feature of his playing that if you want to get to grips with it, then that's the first thing you probably want to check out. So actually, I'd recommend trying to go through the tune just without any adding any fancy stuff and just trying to get used to this. Come on, cowgirl in the sand. You're the face in your command. Just getting used to this feeling. Do, do, cha, do, 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 cha. There's a little slight accent there on beats two and four. Once you've got used to that idea, we need to be able to keep the hand moving consistently while we occasionally put in other things. So the very first intro, this. Very 
very difficult to do slowly. I've had like, f yeah, quite a few goes at, at, th at this particular section. I'm like, God, it's, it's hard to do slowly. It's really difficult to count it. Um, the first one, the first hammer on with the first finger. That's a hammer on. So one, two, three. There's, it's just down, down, and then slightly bigger strum. So you can hammer on the first finger. And then immediately after that, there's an up, up pick. It's, it's kind of starting around the third string upwards, that way. Down, down, down hammer. There's a down in there. Down, down, down hammer, down, up. So there's a little down, up. The, the down on the one, two, three, down, up. So just before the upstroke, the down's there, but it's just very, very quiet and, and subtle. But it's to, again, it's to keep that hand motion moving. So you might want to try cycling that one. Down, down, up. So down, the little muted thing. The next down, you're going to strum right through to the second string. See, so and you put a little finger down on the uh, third fret of the second string. And then the, immediately afterwards, the up stroke, you're lifting off little finger and it's revealing the first finger. Down, up, up, down. And then it's an up stroke lifting off first finger and then put it down again for the A minor. Okay, definitely you want to work on just that one little bit first of all, trying to work on that consistency of the strumming hand. And then it's just changing to this F. And it's, he's doing an F and then lifting off the second finger. So uh, it's nothing on the thicker string or the thumb if you can reach over. And then third fret, third fret, second fret, first fret, and then the thinner string muted. And if you lift off the second finger, you get this lovely like F major not or F, F sus2, I suppose. Should probably call it. Let's think of it as an ad nine, but sus2 would probably be its technical name. Um, I mean, it's all about that, you know, and it's one of those things that I think for me when I was learning that style, I guess, and those sort of things like Old Man and those sort of songs as well, where it, it's a, quite a common thing to, to have this consistent movement with a little bit of the palm muting. And once you get used to being able to add other notes into it, it becomes fairly, well, it feels to me quite natural. And I think that that's something that you want to be aspiring to with this kind of practice is uh, getting it to feel natural when you do that. And, and to do that, you want to start with it real simple and not trying to do too much fancy stuff. I don't think with a riff like this that it's worth just going like down, down, down hammer down up down down up down up down even though like we can do it that way i'll do that again just because i was surprised i was actually able to do that but down 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 up down up down up down up down okay there, but practicing it that slowly feels counterintuitive right so it, it doesn't feel like that's what it should be it should... but it might be one of those things where it's easy for me to do it and i'm forgetting what it's like for you guys right so excuse me if that's the case but i uh, you know have a go at doing it slowly but i think you'll have more success just trying to get the basic groove down first with that hand moving consistently. Because I'm just thinking that. That's all I'm, I'm really concentrating on that, that finger, that hand. And I'm exaggerating because it's not that 
It's not that dominant when Neil plays it. On, on the electric one, it's still there, the, the feeling of the hand moving continuously, but I'm somewhat exaggerating it to make sure that you get the, the right idea. Now, that's the intro, which is, again, kind of a, a merger of, of the original parts, but it's pretty much the way that Neil plays it. Uh, well, I have a few variations that he does, but it's fairly consistent. Um, when did we get into the verse? Hello, cowgirl in the sand. It's got the variations on the F, but not on the A minor to get in the way of the vocal. Is this place in your command? C going to G to F major 7 back G. Now, there's a real nice thing that he does there uh, on quite a few versions. And it's interesting that it follows the, the strumming pattern again. Down on the G. On the third fret of the thicker string, up on the open A string, down with the second finger on the B, uh, note B, which is second fret of the fifth string, open D string with an up pick, and then you're on the C. Down, up, down, up, down. Okay, really, really nice little movement. And again, it's, it's the important thing is it's following that consistent movement. here one and two and three e and four okay very very common neil pattern again down down mute down up down 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 it's the one Okay, uh, let me just play th through that section now, uh, the, the verses and that little bridgey part. Um, the E minor is just a push, so it's just an eighth note earlier than before. And again, if you're keeping the hand moving, those sort of things don't become a problem. Okay, so A minor. F. A minor. to G fill C to G and to F major 7 to G D minor to E minor to C to F D minor to E minor and C to F It's the woman in you that makes you want to play that game Okay, D, D minor Down, up, down, 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 down. One and two and three. One and two and three. Four, one and two. So this part, he moves on to the single line. Probably want to use little finger to slide from the third fret to the fifth fret on the thinner string. Then slide back. Open E string. Third fret on the second string to first finger on the note C. Uh, which is the first fret of the second string. One, two, three, E and four. One, two, three, E and four. One, two, three. Uh, let me just double check the picking. Um, one, down, down, up, down, down. Down, down, up, down, down. Down, down, up, down, down. Okay, it's going to have that still... Still going to have that consistent hand movement. It's a real feature thing here. Um, and it's going F, F, C. There's a little uh, F to C. It's an open D string, open fourth string. So second finger lifts off, hammer, open G string, and then back to the note with underneath the second finger, which is the note E. Um, so then E7, F, okay, E7, like regular E, but with the little finger down on the fourth fret of the second string. 
sometimes on some live versions there's a G chord that goes back to the A minor on other ones there isn't so uh, that's up to you whether you want to put that in uh, so um such a great tune isn't it um if you're going to go for the full-on as recorded version most of it's solo okay so uh, a minor pentatonic scale with some of the notes from c major added in that's the way to think of it it is c major scale but if you think of c major scale it doesn't it's not going to sound right you want to think kind of a minor pentatonic and then you can add in the note f and add in the note b sometimes b less so but the note f obviously sounds great over the uh, f chord um, and that seems to be the pool of notes that Neil's playing. I, I'm a huge fan of Neil Young's guitar work and his, his, everything about what he plays and writes and the whole you know, artist experience. But when it comes to transcribing the solos of his, it's never been something I've got really into. I, you know, I like listening to them and I love the energy from them, but it, it's a mel it's an instantaneous expression where and it's not the kind of thing I want to learn like I might learn other solos where there's licks to steal because I don't want to steal his licks because it's just an expression it's a, it's like a, a a melody more than licks that I might want to borrow like if I'm learning an Albert King solo or an Eric Clapton solo or something there's like little licks that I want to add to my vocabulary I don't find the same thing for Neil and that might just be me um but there's, there's definitely benefit to listening to it and learning it and transcribing a few of them so you can kind of see what his note pool is, like what notes he might be choosing for this kind of improv and, and, and picking up the energy. But for me, it's much more, this kind of tune is much more about me improvising on it than learning his solo and trying to play along with his solo. You know, that might be different for some of you, you know, big Neil Young fans out there. But, uh, and, and, and if you, you want to do that, it's very transcribable, his solos. You should definitely get into it if you're, if you're uncertain about transcribing his material. Those solos is a really good uh, starting point. There's nothing too unexpected. He's not doing crazy tapping or funny picking. Uh, you know, so it's, not, it's much more of a melody exercise than a technical exercise, which you often get in other guitar players' work. It's so, um, yeah, you definitely, I would encourage you to have a go at transcribing some of those things if that's... Um, if that's what you wanted to do, but otherwise just find a mate and have a jam with it. Most of the solos are just the A minor to F. It doesn't go through all of those other chordy parts. So it is just, uh, you know, jamming around in A minor and having some fun. And, you know, if you've got the whammy bar out, you can do some of those chords. Again, I've given you enough, I think, in this lesson that you could listen to the original recording and start to work out the parts and hear the separation between the speakers. It's pretty obvious, you know, how, the, how they're going. And you can pick up on as much of the detail as you wanted to, you know, very much a choice. Well, I hope you dig on this lesson and there's plenty more Neil Young songs to be found over on my website, justinguitar.com. Just start typing Neil Young there up the top and you'll see all of the songs that I've done of his so far. Plenty more in the works as well. Do let me know in the comments below what songs you would like to see next. I am using that to inform my judgment of which tunes to pick next. I've got a big master to-do list, but if, you know, lots of people are voting for a particular tune. It'll get shot up the list there. So let me know. Uh, do subscribe to my channel if you dig what I do. And I'll see you for plenty more very soon. Bye-bye.